If you want to turn over to Ruth, the book of Ruth, um, our lesson this afternoon is going to come from there. I know I put that we would continue our study in Philippians, but uh, we're going to take a little detour today. Um, Go to the book of Ruth and look at some of the things uh, that we can learn from this great book. You know, as we look at as we look at the book of Ruth, um, we look at the things that happen in here, and we look at, you know, starts with the story of Elimelech, Naomi, and her sons. They leave um, Bethlehem. They go to Moab, and the reason they do so is for food. You know, they're, they're trying to uh, find food, trying to find the things that they need to survive. And they leave and go to Moab while they are there. The sons marry. Uh, Naomi gains two daughters-in-law. We have Ruth and Orpah. Uh, We don't know how old Ruth was, but we do know that typically in that day and age, most women married in their early teens. So it was usually fairly young. So during this period of time, that they are in Moab, which would have been about 10 years. Uh, Naomi loses her husband. She loses her sons. All of them die during this time. Uh, She learns that Israel now has food. Israel has the things that they need. So she goes back uh, to Bethlehem and she asks and entreats her daughters-in-law, go back to their people. Stay here. You know, you don't have to make this journey with me. Um... You know, more than likely what people will uh, estimate as far as as age, that Ruth was probably in her 20s when her husband died. So this is probably, she's probably a a young woman uh, still at this point, and she makes this decision to go to a country that she's not familiar with, uh, with her mother-in-law. The book of Ruth is a love story. This tells the story of a young woman who gave up her people. She gave up her religion. Uh, She gave up every component of her life to care for someone else. And in turn, she ends up being cared for. Uh, The name Ruth means friendship. And we see uh, that uh, coming true in this book. The friendship, the way that, that she takes care of her mother-in-law, but then she is taken care of as well. So this afternoon, I want us to look at some of the lessons that we get from the book of Ruth, uh, some lessons that we can take from it. First of all, first of all, from the book of Ruth, we see dedication. We see dedication. Uh, Ruth dedicated herself to Naomi. And we see in chapter 1 from verses 6 all the way through Verse 18, that Ruth makes a choice. And it's a choice that's given both to Ruth and to Orpah. And Orpah makes the decision to stay. There was nothing wrong with that. She was given that option. That was her people. That was where she grew up. That's everybody she knows. And she made the decision to stay. But Naomi makes, or excuse me, Ruth makes the choice to go with Naomi. This wasn't a choice made because of personal gain. You know, Naomi didn't have any sons for her to marry. Uh, As far as Ruth knew when she made this choice to go back to Israel, she was going to die as a widow at this point. You know, she did not have any options. There wasn't anything Naomi could give her. She gave up her personal comforts in this choice. She abandoned her people. She abandoned their religion of her people, and Ruth chose to make the God of heaven, the God of Israel, her God. Does our love show dedication today? Do we recognize the choice that we have made to follow God? Are we truly understanding the choice that we make? Well, Luke 9 verse 62 says, Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. We are only fit for the kingdom if we have committed everything to the kingdom. We are looking forward, and we're looking at what's in front of us, and we have committed everything. 
Hebrews 10 verse 38 tells us the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. You know, we have to make that decision to go forward and we have to do it. We talked this morning about David and Goliath, you know, and looking at that story. And one of the things we noticed was David just takes off head first straight at Goliath. He doesn't look back. He doesn't second guess that decision. He doesn't have to stop and think through. He knew what he needed to do and he did it. Well, here we see the same thing with Ruth. We see Ruth that that she makes a lasting choice. This was a choice with real consequences and she made the decision and she went forward and she didn't look back. Do we follow God merely from the perspective of seeking some personal gain? You know, some people follow God to make their families happy. Well, I'm doing this because I know mom wants me to. I'm doing this because I know dad wants me to. I'm doing this because I know my wife or my husband expect me to. You know, some people follow God or claim to follow God because Society expects it. You know, I think a lot of politicians and people in prominent positions do the things they do simply for the visual because everybody expects them to be that type of God-fearing person. Well, you know, 1 Timothy 6 verse 5 tells us, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. You know, we can't live our lives being godly because we think we're going to get something personally out of it. Well, Ruth here expected no favors from Naomi. She knew what she was getting into. She knew that there was nothing there for her, and she still made the decision and went forward. You know, are we willing to give up our personal comforts in order to do God's will? So many people give lip service to God, but they don't ever make a sacrifice. They don't actually do anything. They just say things. They proclaim their love for God until it comes time to inconvenience them. And then their tune seems to change. Well, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, but what things are gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. You know, Paul has that attitude, and that's the attitude we need to have, that I give up all of these things. I'm not worried about the things. I'm following God because I'm supposed to, because I need to, and that's the decision I've made. Well, Ruth did the same thing. She's following Naomi, and she's given up everything. There is nothing personally for her to gain. You know, Ruth's love shows us true dedication. The second thing we see from Ruth Second thing we see from Ruth is devotion. Devotion. You know, Ruth devoted herself to Naomi. If you look at chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. And how you have left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. You know, Ruth devoted herself to Naomi. She worked in order to feed Naomi. Her going out into the fields, gleaning the grain, beating the the grain out, All of this is is being done because she is working to feed them. Because as two women, they didn't have any other options. The text says that she came home with an ephah of barley. That's about five gallons. For her to get five gallons of grain in a day is a lot of work. She worked hard. 
She also cared for the helpless Naomi in her age. We don't know how old Naomi was, but she had two grown sons who had been married for 10 years. She was old enough to, you know, need support from other people. She needed help, and Ruth was providing that. Ruth was even willing to marry a virtual stranger to accomplish this goal. You know, such devotion exhibits such great trust in others and shows true self-sacrifice. Does our love show true devotion today? Do we understand the value of labor for those that we love? 1 Timothy 5, 8, but if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith, faith and is worse than an unbeliever. We are supposed to work for our families. We are supposed to take care of our families. You know, there are times that, that maybe the husband or the father can't do that. Maybe he's sick. Maybe we lose the husband or father in the family. We're told to step up and help our families, to work for our families. But we're told to work and labor for anyone in need. Ephesians 4 verse 28, let him who stole, steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. We're told to work. We are to be a people that works. We are to do things. But we are to show the love we have for those, and that labor allows us to show that love. Do we understand our need to, or understand the need that we have to care for the helpless? James 1 verse 27 says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, to keep oneself unspotted from the world. We are to take care of those who need it. We are to help those who need it. You know, would we be willing to sacrifice our lives for another not, I'm not saying here to die. I'm saying to give up our life to serve someone else. You know, you see movie themes like this, right? You get somebody that's an executive. Something happens to somebody in a family. They quit their job. They give up their, their career, all those things to, to do what they need to do. But shouldn't that be something normal for us if it's needed? We would give up the things that are important to us to help someone. We know Matthew chapter 16, 24 through 26 talks about if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. In other words, my life is not the most important thing. My wants are not the most important thing. My needs are not the most important thing. It is the other person. How do I treat others? Do I dedicate myself to others? Do I devote myself to others? Well, Ruth love, Ruth's love shows us true devotion. Number three. Number three, another lesson from Ruth we see is determination. Ruth was determined. First of all, Ruth was determined to go with Naomi. You know, Naomi did everything she could to talk her out of it. Ruth was determined. No, I've made up my mind. This is what's right. This is what I'm going to do. You're not going to talk me out of it. But then she was also determined to work for Naomi. She was determined to do what she needed to do to make money for them, to help them. Uh, 2 verse 2, so Ruth the Moabite has said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain. She wanted to go work, and she was determined to do it. You know, this was a hostile time for single women. Men would have taken, would take advantage of single women during this time. It would have been understandable if she didn't want to get out and try to work. But she went anyway. She also marries Boaz to support Naomi. And we see that in chapter 3, verse 5. 
And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. Naomi tells her, hey, this is a kinsman. If you go and do this, this is what's going to happen. She understood what was going to happen. And she did it because she was determined to marry Boaz to help support Naomi. You know, the law of Israel had this provision for marriage if there was no male child in the family. The law of near kinsmanship. Uh, and this entailed marriage. So Ruth followed the customs of the day to initiate this courtship that would have been under the law. How many, you know, I can look at Emily and Avery. How many of y'all would let your mother pick out your husband? <laughs> your mother and former mother-in-law to pick out your husband. And that's essentially what she does. She tells her. You go and you do this, and you are going to end up with a husband. And she does it. Nothing stops her from these tasks. Well, does our love show true determination? Are we determined to go when the Lord tells us to go? Because Mark 16, 15, and 16 tells us, go into all the world and preach the gospel. What's that mean? We've got to go. Luke chapter 14, verse 21 you know, the servant came, he reported the things to his master, and the master was angry, and he says, go out into the streets, go to the highways, go to the byways, bring in the poor, bring in the lame, bring in the blind. The feast is ready, we need them all here. Go do it. God tells us, do it. We are to go out into the world and bring people to Christ. Do we do that? Do we work when the Lord tells us to work? John 9 verse 4 says, Must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. We need to work as we have opportunity. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 says, Let us do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith, while we have the opportunity. Do we get out? Do we work? Do we do what God wants us to do? Do we go when he tells us to go? Is there anything today that can stop us from doing God's will? Romans 8 verse 31, What then shall we say to these things if God is for us who can be against us? The only ones that can stop us from doing God's will is me. I'm the only one that can stop myself from doing God's will. As one said, I've seen the enemy and the enemy is us. We are our own enemies. If we are determined, like Ruth was determined to do all of these things, if we are determined, nothing can stop us. We can do God's will and we can do it the way that he wants us to do it. Ruth's love showed us true determination. You know, we see from this, this book, we see dedication, we see devotion, we see determination, we see the acts of this young lady here who does all of these things, and we need to take a look at ourselves and say, do we do the same? Am I as dedicated to God as Ruth was ded dedicated to Naomi? Am I as devoted to God as Ruth was devoted to Naomi? And am I as determined to serve God as Ruth was determined to work for Naomi? We need to be. You know, we look at this example and we see the way that our spiritual lives need to be. Let's do everything we can to match the example of Ruth. If we have not been the people that we need to be, we need to get our lives right. We need to get our focus on him. We need to make sure we're doing what he wants us to do. And we can't let anything at all stand in our way. If there's anything we can do for you, come as we stand and sing.